Hi. I just recently rebuilt my website using Hugo. Hugo is a static site generator, meaning that it takes files that you have on your uh, system and the template that you've downloaded to convert those files into a website full of HTML static files. I was able to dump quite a bit of code off my site, which uh, is going to make things a lot easier for me. Save me a lot of time. I can use that time working on other sites. Um, also, I was able to dump the database, which was pretty cool because uh, all of my blog entries, instead of going into uh, admin um, online, um, I can just uh, go into text files and uh, create new text files with more content, and they get automatically created into uh, that gets automatic processed and, and uh, turned into a web page. Um, so what we're going to do today is uh, take uh, some of the assets uh, that come with those templates, like all the CSS files, and we're going to bundle them all together into one file. So we're just serving one file, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Same thing with the JavaScript. A lot of times these templates come with several JavaScript files. We're going to take all those JavaScript files, and we're going to I'm going to show you how to bundle all those into a single file so that you're just uh, serving that single file. This will help with page speed and uh, it, it just it will give you kind of an uh, idea or an overview of uh, how you program in Hugo, uh, how you program those templates or make modifications to templates that you download. So we're going to get right into that. We're going to try to go through this pretty fast too, uh, otherwise this video will be longer than anybody wants to listen to or watch. Uh, that's looking for the how to do this. So uh, if you go into Hugo and you go into the documentation here, uh, they have a really great documentation. We need to take a look at the Hugo pipes section because this is where um, uh, different routines uh, will uh, happen prior to your site being compiled. Uh, for instance, uh, you could have some SAS documents um, that need to be converted over to SAS. You might use Grunt for that, um, could do it on the fly for you, but in any case here, um, this is already built in. It would be great if they had CoffeeScript, maybe that's coming. But what we're going to work on today is uh, asset bundling. And here, that's where we're going to take um, JavaScript or CSS files and we're going to bundle them into a single file. Let me show you how to do that. So first, to get things going, let's go ahead and build a new site. I'm going to use a theme. I'm going to go ahead and use Sumrat. That's what I used for my website. I'm a little bit familiar with it. And uh, first of all, let's go ahead and build a new Hugo site. Just call it new site. Call the directory into that. It's uh, created some files there. Now we're going to get this theme. Go to the download. And I'm going to right click on that and uh, Go to the copy link location because this is a GitHub resource. So we're going to clone that. Git clone that GitHub resource into the themes directory. And if we look into uh, that theme directory, we're going to see uh, the example site because we were going to take that example site and we're going to put those assets into the main directory of our website there. So let's uh, data, let's see what, what we're dealing with here. We got data, static, config. So maybe I want to delete those things here. Data, oh, not that. Data, static. I'm going to delete those. And then we're going to go into themes. Grab all of that. Copy it. Paste it into that directory. Now that we have all the files in place, we could actually start up Hugo server. Take a look at this site. There it is. Now, if we take a look at the page source of this particular uh, template, 
uh, we'll see there's a number of CSS files. And, you know, if we go to the footer, we're going to see that there are a number of JS files. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to take each of these files and uh, bundle them into a, a single file. A lot of these templates, they come with the, uh, the uh, files, the CSS and the JavaScript files in the static directory, meaning that those files aren't ever going to change. What we're going to do is we're going to move those files into the asset directory so that we can manipulate them. So um, let's just go ahead and do that first. Um, we're going to go into the themes. We're going to go into the static. And this is uh, plugins. This is where all of those CSS and JavaScript files are. We're just going to delete it. And we're going to place it in your assets directory. And yep, there they are. And that, of course, has broke our site. But we're going to fix that soon enough. See, uh, we're not as uh, static files are not meant to change. That's the whole idea of uh, what static is. Uh, so uh, it's uh, logical that um, we're going to move these up to assets because uh, these files are are meant to be changed and processed by Hugo. Now, if we look at the config file. We're going to see uh, this is where it got all that information from. We have the CSS, uh, we have the JavaScript. So let's just leave that up there so we can look at that. And let's go back into the themes to the layouts where we'll find maybe the head. Yeah, and the head here. This is where the parameters for plugins CSS are being looped and we're painting this uh, this link line this is where it's all being painted so let's change it here and while we're making these changes this is updating live so we're going to be able to see right away when we break stuff because we like breaking things so first thing that we're going to do is we, we want to create a um, a bundle that uh, all of these CSS files are going to go into because then we're going to take that bundle now that we've got it all in one place and we're going to concatenate all those files into a single file. So the fir first thing that we're going to go is uh, we'll create a CSS bundle and uh, this is just going to be an empty array so we're going to designate it as a slice. Now in here um, rather than repeat this line over and over again um, in this range, we're going to put it outside there because we only need to run it once. And the next thing that we're going to do is we want to get, instead of uh, painting this link resource, we're going to instead um, get the raw data from that directory. And we'll call this CSS file because it's just a single file. I'm going to call the resources command and we're going to get that file and uh, it's going to be the link like we have down there. Next thing that we can do, now that we have the resource, we can run commands on it. We can even minify it. How about that? The next thing that we're going to do is that we want to add it to this uh, array that we have started up here. And uh, with that array, I think we're going to append that CSS file that we have here. So each time this range uh, goes through, it's going to loop and it's going to take that file and append it to our array. Then we can take that array and now we need to concatenate all of those, uh, uh, all those files in that array together into one animal. So we're going to call that, we're still going to call that CSS bundle, but we're going to take the CSS bundle and do something with it go to resources and uh, we're going to run that concat connect command there. That's uh, what we were looking at in the documentation I believe for bundling. 
uh, yeah, concat. And then uh, with that, we also can uh, tell it where we want to put it. Well, where do we want to put it? Well, let's look at the landscape here. Let's take a look at that. Oh, we're inside the theme, assets. Well, they use CSS and JS, so let's stick with that. We want to make friends here with our code. We want to rock the boat. So this is CSS, and this is going to be a bundle CSS, we'll call it. And here, this, here we can fingerprint it. I'll show you what that does later, but uh, uh, this is just to help uh, so we don't have to deal with cache issues. And also, if you're making any changes to the CSS files for whatever reason, maybe you're updating them. Maybe they're a library that's downloaded and you need to update them. Well, each time you compile your site, you're going to have a different fingerprint, and you're not going to have those weird cache issues that come up when nothing is really wrong with your code. It's just um, the cache on their system, is, and they're calling old files. That's not going to happen here. And that's also another important reason why we might want to do this. Next thing that we're going to do is... Uh, you go to the CSS bundle, and uh, we want to grab the permalink out of it. Okay, that should be it. That looks good. Let's go back here and see what happens when we save this. Oh, man, I broke something. What? Line 14. Sources. Oh. You know, this isn't actually, this resource that we're pulling isn't actually in our asset directory. It's, it's pulling off site. So that isn't going to work. We're not going to be manipulating. That'd be, <laughs> we wouldn't make friends doing that. Um, pulling down other people's resources and doing things with them with uh, with our software so nah uh, so it makes sense we want to skip that file um, wow maybe do you have any regex docs search docs regex functions we're not replacing find Oh, nice. Go. I don't know anything about Go. Well, let's try it. We're inside the range. Let's do an if statement. If find re if it starts with HTTP and it's that link. And then do something else. Do this thing at another end. And uh, just take that copy, this here. So what we're doing is that if it starts with an HTTP, it's off site. We don't want to add it to our resource bundle. We, instead, we just want to paint the line. And we'll put that link back see what happens will you go away do you like me yeah okay next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the footer where those javascript files are we're going to do the same exact thing we got the range site params plugins we're going to do that too so we're going to go outside the range and we're going to we're going to um, create a bundle we're going to designate it as a slice so we can use it in here pull that out of here think that there are any off-site resources. I mean, to make it work just in case you put something in later might be smart, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna, we're not gonna worry about that uh, if statement. We're just gonna do this like we did the last one. So we've got a JS file. 
Now, we're going to resources again because we're pulling those resources out, getting that link. Hey, we want to minify this too. Why not? Not everything become, uh, comes to you in a beautiful fashion. And the next thing that we're wanting to do is uh, add it to our bundle. So we go with JS bundle. And we're going to append it. That JS file. There it is. Now we go outside. And we're going to put all of those together into a single uh, single file. So we've got the JS bundle. JS bundle. And uh, we're going to do something on that. We're going to resources cat. And we're going to fingerprint it. And go back here to link. We don't need that. What we do need to do is call JS bundle. And we're going to get that new permalink that's part of that now. 28. What did I do? 7. JS bundle, JS bundle. Maybe you can see what I did right off the bat. Etch template failed. Wrong number of arguments. Oh, you know, we have to tell it where to go. Um, remember, we had CSS and JS, so we want to stick with that make the code happy, make sure it's beautiful. So let's put it somewhere. And this is gonna be a bundle.js. Ah, now we have a working site. And if we go to the code again, what we're gonna see here, we've got this big old ugly space here. Oh, look at that. That's probably because I don't know what I'm doing. You know, we. I've only been doing this for a couple of weeks here with Hugo, so maybe there's something better than range here. But, you know, we're just, this is just an example. In all honesty, too, um, we can minify this and make all this ugly spacing going away anyway. So uh, who cares for right now? So here we have the, uh, the font file that's being called off site, but all the rest of the files are now part of this bundle. And it, here is the fingerprint. So this is going to be different each time you compile your site. So uh, we're, you're not going to be dealing with the cache issues. But also, you're going to get a little bit better uh, love from the uh, page speed analysis program. It might look like we know what we're doing when someone else has done all the work at Hugo. <laughs> Same thing here. We have this, uh, scripts, all those scripts. Now we're all here. So this is just kind of a, a quick tutorial of uh, what you can do with Hugo and, uh, you know, take a template down and just start tweaking it a little by little and, uh, you know, get familiarize yourself with it. You know, if we take a look at, uh, for instance, uh, let's just go ahead and, and compile our site. Like I said, we're going to minify it, right? It's a public directory, so we call public, and here are, is the site that's been generated. Let's just take a look at the index file. I'm already in here, so we'll just vi into it, right? HTML. Now that looks better. See, it's covered up all the nastiness. Cover up all of our mistakes. No one will ever know. Looks beautiful. So. Welcome to Hugo. Yeah, you should try it out.